Is there an identification tonight on the other victims? As, as far as the civilians? The, the civilians that were injured and killed. Yeah. So we do have identification on those. We're not prepared to release it at this time. Uh, we have notified a number of family members, but uh, they have not had an opportunity to notify extended family and things. Uh, I would uh, confirm for you that we did have one individual killed, and I know I heard uh, somebody say about two victims. There were three in total besides the former president. So two critically wounded, one killed. At this point, do you know if they were sitting near each other and where in relation to the former president? Uh, I don't have their exact seating um, by individual. Uh, again, that will all be part of the investigation, but the Scott, their shots were scattered somewhat, and so they weren't uh, just into one particular uh, location. So you're saying just one fatality as of right now? Yes. The shooter in one fatality? The shooter oh. was one fatality. Did you oh, yes. Did you so there Sorry. was one victim of the shooter who was killed, and then the shooter was killed. And then you see it would be critical. Yes, ma'am. When is the state saying they saw a semi-automatic rifle that you decided to shoot her? Can you share any more details of it? That's what uh, I've heard those it. reports as well. And, uh, and again, uh, uh, we do uh, have a good idea of what the weapon was. But again, that's all part of the, uh, the ongoing investigation. I, and I'm not trying to be cagey about that. Uh, you know, when uh, the SAC talked about the need to be very methodical and to be cautious at that scene. Uh, we are doing just that. We don't want anybody else getting hurt. And uh, candidly, there are some concerns uh, that, that we'll be able to talk more about later on uh, about just what those concerns are and the community. Did you talk to the shooter's family yet? That's all part of the investigation. That was sure there are a lot of really angry. Are you monitoring? Has there been any uh, threats in response to this? Are you worried? Have there been any specific threats? That's certainly a concern, and uh, you know, we're monitoring that situation. I mentioned that you know we're bringing a lot of assets to bear, and so like the FBI, uh, utilizing their analysts, we also have the Pennsylvania Criminal Intelligence Center. We will utilize uh, the resources of our intelligence division and the Criminal Intelligence Center to be able to monitor uh, for concerns about any threats, uh, regardless of the the side of the issue or the political spectrum, uh, you want to make sure that you know, try and avoid any further violence. But no, nothing specific so far. No, sir. Without identifying them by name, can you say anything about the, uh, the other folks who were injured or killed? That, were they adults, men, male, female, anything Ages? at all? Uh, they were adults and they're male. All, all three. How difficult of a day is this for your department, though, or all of your departments who are going to talk to these family members, including the civilians who were gunned down, or they just went to a rally to try and, you know, celebrate, I guess, the upcoming election? What are those conversations like, and how do you kind of get through that? We have trained investigators, and we're partnered hand-in-hand uh, -hand with the FBI, again, because we've got some federal violations, some state violations, and so our investigators are going out and methodic, and we have a large team of investigators. Uh, they're going out, dividing up these interviews, and uh, trying to conduct them as quickly as possible, and then there'll be follow-ups. You know, with the, uh, the the FBI asking for people to call in tips, I have no doubt that we will receive a lot of additional information that will also require follow-up. But again, we're working very well together, and uh, it's, a, it's a, only a short matter of time until we get through all of those interviews. Colonel, from your experience, how close a call was it for, for President Trump? There were no police hit with bullets. From your experience, how close a call was it for President Trump? I'm not going to speculate or comment on Have any of you talked to the President? Did any of you have any kind of reaction? No. no. How, how Which law enforcement agencies were tasked with securing this particular round outside of the United States Secret Service? Well, Secret Service always has the lead on, uh, on securing something like this, but then they work very closely. Uh, it's a... It, and, and I hate to use the word routine, but it, it is a fairly routine uh, matter for all of our agencies to work jointly with the Secret Service. And it really depends on the venue, uh, on what information is out there, what, what uh, number of resources are devoted to it. Uh, and, and we work with them to uh, provide whatever is requested by the Secret Service. But they're the lead. In that was there anything about this venue that made it particularly difficult to secure? 
you know, I, I would defer to the Secret Service to answer uh, that. They would have done the initial uh, assessment. Was the rooftop part of what was being secured? Was the rooftop, given its proximity to the event, part of that process? It's my understanding that was outside of the perimeter. Did this shooter have any previous criminal history? We're not going to comment on anything about Did that. Did any agency deny uh, Trump's team extra security? Any of the agencies that are out there? Not that I'm aware of. If, if Trump had been the nominee already, would he have had additional security for this event? Was uh, there again, Secret Service has the lead, and I'm not going to comment or speculate on what may or may not be provided at any given point, uh, depending on their status as a, as a candidate. What I can tell you is that, uh, in my experience, Secret Service does an excellent job of maintaining security on protectees. Uh, they're very cautious. Uh, they don't hesitate to ask for resources, and candidly, we don't hesitate to supply them with resources. Deputy Colonel, you're asking for the public's help. Can you elaborate and be more specific about what you'd really like to see from the public in its videos, photos, um, personal accounts? I think uh, the, the videos and photos would be very helpful, uh, and I think that uh, once the shooter is identified, anyone that has specific information on that shooter, uh, that would be very helpful as well to help us uh, assess motive. And, uh, and and again, as I mentioned earlier, we are absolutely not taking for granted that this was a lone wolf attack. Uh, and, and so we would be looking for any additional information that might point us toward anybody else that may have had a hand in this. Sir, at this point, what is the main focus of the investigation? What's the most important thing for you right now, a few hours? Well, there's, there's not any one uh, single focus. I mean, certainly uh, the immediate focus was life safety, getting the former president out of there and to care, uh, getting care to the other victims and trying to secure the scene as quickly as possible. It shifted then from a life safety priority to then a, an investigative priority. And so our, I guess if I had to point to where we are right now, the, the single greatest priority would be to identifying a motive and whether there was anyone else involved. We're just beginning the political season. Are you guys concerned with all of these rallies that happen and how they're set up? Is this going to change maybe the venues? Again, I would, I would refer you to the Secret Service in terms of what they work out with the campaigns. Uh, we will continue to supply resources, as I'm sure the FBI will, uh, and the local partners as well. When this was announced, it was, you know, there was quite a few days of a heads up that people were getting ready to come to this Trump rally. From a law enforcement perspective, when you announce a big event like this, all that time in advance and a week out, does it give people more time to plan something like this? I suppose, but there's a balance, I would think, that any of the campaigns on either side uh, uh, try to weigh. I mean, the, the point of them announcing it, I suspect, is because they want the crowd. Uh, and so it's not up to us in law enforcement to tell them when they should announce or how they should announce or how they should conduct it. We offer our best advice. Uh, again, working hand in hand with the Secret Service, offer our best advice of how best to secure and protect that venue. Sir, considering how, how many people were there, and you have packed in there and you have somebody in an elevated position with potentially a high-powered rifle. How lucky is it that we were only talking about a couple of victims, as sad and tragic as that is? Well, we're certainly grateful that we don't have even more victims. And again, uh, in terms of how this could have occurred, that will be part of this after-action report and an investigation that occurs so that we can hopefully ensure that something like this doesn't happen again. Has an autopsy been conducted yet, or is the schedule? It has not been conducted. Do you have an estimate on how many people were at the rally? I do not. Hey, if somebody has a video of the photos, so where should they send it? So we have the 1-800 call FBI if you have audio tips, and then we set up a specific tip line for audio and video. That's fbi.gov slash buffer. And they should send it just like any video? Like Anything any that anyone has that is related to this incident that they think Investigation. We'll take anything and we'll, we'll analyze it and we'll make a determination of investigative value. So, it sounds like Go ahead. Go ahead. so from what you've been briefed on, it sounds like law enforcement only knew he was up there until shots were fired. Is that what you're hearing? So that that is the assessment this time. So are you surprised that a sniper was able to fire off a handful of shots? 
with the former president. I mean, again, we're still, still working through the security apparatus that the Secret Service had in place, what potentially happened. That There's going to be a long investigation into exactly what took place and how the individual was able to get access to the location, what type of weapon he had, all that. It is really days, weeks, and months. But how surprised are you that he was able to get off like four or five shots? It is, it is surprising. But, but again, to get the truth, all the details of that will come out later in investigation. Well, now back to the perimeter of this building. I think it's going to be really difficult for people to understand that this building with a very high vantage point, some 100 meters away from where this is happening, isn't part of that perimeter. What goes into that conversation over what is in and out and why wouldn't that be? Again, the Secret Service really needs to answer that question. They conduct the initial site survey. They do the initial security assessments and determine where the different security locations should be. And they're the ones who are in charge of securing the scene. We, along with other state and local assets, are there to support the Secret Service and their mission. How many troopers and agents were at the rally, obviously before the shooting, and how is that number determined? And should perhaps there have been more? So I don't have the specific numbers. I, I got you to as well. No, I can speak just for PSP. We've had uh, uh, physically on site there probably 30 to 40 uh, members of PSP, but we also have additional resources in the area. Uh, we utilize aviation, for example, and, and a variety of other resources, uh, dogs to sweep beforehand that really aren't counted in, uh, in that. And, and, and again, the number is driven by what the request is from the Secret Service. You know, just uh, in their defense, I mean, what I would want to say is it is incredibly difficult to have a venue open to the public and to secure that against any possible threat against a very determined attacker. Uh, that, that's a huge lift to try and do it. And, uh, you know, again, uh, the investigation will really uh, give us an opportunity to take a look at where any failures occurred and what can be done better in the future. Lieutenant Colonel Bibbins, do you know when another briefing might be held? Tomorrow? Uh, we don't have or? one scheduled, but uh, but I would tell you we will uh, we will let you know. I'll give you plenty of notice. Uh, certainly, uh, as as soon as additional things develop that would be uh, noteworthy or of interest to you, we'll get that scheduled and, uh, and, and have another. Locally, what can residents, businesses expect to happen with the investigation over the next couple of days? What's going to be going on there that people need to well, know? Again, the interviews will all be occurring, and so they may see law enforcement in their communities. Uh, people came from a, a wide area to come to this rally. So, uh, you know, there's going to be law enforcement uh, fanning out, and, and, and it, as additional calls, photos, videos come in, uh, you know, those additional interviews will result in law enforcement being out in the community conducting those interviews, but uh, but otherwise, they really shouldn't see any other significant impact. Would you confirm whether it's a male or female, the homicide, the bystander who died? That's a male. A male? Yes. Now, I'm from a European outlet from, from Poland, and I'm already getting text messages from, you know, back home, and people are asking, how could this happen? What's going on in America? I know that it's a philosophical question, but how, how could you talk to the people outside the United States about what happened here in Buffalo? Well, again, what I would say is it's a tragic incident that occurred. Um, we're not in a position to start second-guessing how or why or anything else at this point. Just know that we'll be thoroughly investigated. Uh, if there is anyone to prosecute, that will be done. And, uh, and we'll move forward, but uh, but I don't have a good answer for you. We'll just take one last question. I know that PSP said that you guys were not aware of any um, additional requests from the Trump team for security. What about the FBI? Was there an additional request for additional security from the Trump team, and was that denied in any way, shape, or form? No. No, there was no additional request for security that was ever denied by the FBI. What does the FBI do with these events? Like, what is your role? So we are, we, we showed up after the fact. We were monitoring the event, but it was once the incident occurred that we come and we take the primary jurisdiction for the investigation.